question. Um, on the violent crime spike that we've been seeing, um, there have been smash and grab robberies, there was the pretty alarming murder in the wealthy Hollywood neighborhood last week, and then uh, an attack, a, a violent robbery in Pacific Palisades on Friday. This is sort of similar to the crime spike that we saw over the summer, and one of the president's biggest uh, pushes to address that was the DOJ strike teams that were sent out to those five cities. It was D.C., New York, Chicago, L.A., and San Francisco. Since those strike forces were assembled in July, have they accomplished anything? Look, I, I think we sent those uh, strike forces in part because of the spike in gun violence, something that continues to be a concern. And we sent them, uh, the Department of Justice, I should say, sent them in order to work in partnership and in, law, in lockstep with law enforcement on the ground. We've also recently taken steps. Uh, the Justice Department, the FBI, and federal law enforcement have been working with local jurisdictions, especially areas like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and others where we've seen a rash of break-ins to offer their assistance and provide assistance through multi jurisdictional task forces. Uh, we know that we've seen over the course of time, while we'll let other people determine what the cause and effect is, we know we've seen an increase in crime over the course of the pandemic. We've seen that timeline. What the president's been focused on doing is working to ensure there's funding to support local cops, to support local jurisdictions, to ensure that a law enforcement at a federal level is a partner, both in the short and long term, to address either these spikes in crimes or, uh, or gun violence, which is a, an ongoing concern, and to ensure there's adequate funding in the budget. So that's what we are working to do. The Department of Justice, I'm sure, can provide you an update on the strike forces. Are you talking about the funding in the Build Back better plan then? The, the funding in the president's proposed budget, which is an increase uh, significantly over what former President Trump proposed. So are you saying that passing this the spending plan would address crime then, in that way? Well, I'm saying that it, it passing the president's budget, which is something obviously we want to get to next year, since we could only uh, get to a short-term uh, CR, has significant increase in, in funding to support police departments, support the fighting of crime, and a significant increase from former President Trump, and something the president supports. And then is there any concern that not having an ATF nominee while all this is going on is somehow leaving a vulnerability or a gap in leadership? Well, uh, I think our collective view here is that uh, the blocking of a fully qualified, experienced former ATF agent uh, from serving in that role uh, certainly is something Republicans didn't have to take the step to do, but here we are. So we have to nominate a new person, and uh, when we're uh, when the president finds the right person, I'm sure he'll he'll be prepared to do that. But again, we could have had a nominee, uh, somebody who was qualified, ready to, and prepared to serve in that role, confirmed and working. And really